Hey, Team Happy and Fit, happy Sunday. We're doing a team call round two on Sunday. Usually we have them on Thursdays, but my friend Brittany uh, graciously decided and accepted uh, speaking for our team. So I have to tell the story. Actually, I'm going to give an announcement and then I'm going to tell the story, but um, we have a sneak peek a week from tomorrow. Here's the deal. If you feel like you're nervous about inviting, it's probably because you're going to come off as creepy. Like that's what you're, you're nervous about is being salesy and creepy. But think about it. If you have a good friend, you've been following someone and you're just like, it has been so much fun talking to you. Have you ever considered? That does not sound creepy. So that's not something to be freaked out by when you're talking to someone about the sneak peek. Hey, have you ever considered doing what I'm doing? It's been so fun talking to you. I think that you would really like this. That is not creepy. They're going to say, no, thank you. Or yes, let me check it out. They're not going to say you are awful. I'm deleting you. And if they do, they're not, they're not getting your vibe, right? So if you're being just genuine and um, building those relationships, I, I challenge you to get at least one person in there. Um, after we started doing the live video sneak peeks and now we've gone back to the videos, I challenged myself to invite people. I think I got seven people in the last one um, just because I was being more intentional and not just sharing the event or just sharing the live video. I was being intentional with telling people about it and I wasn't being creepy about it. I just was saying, have you ever considered? And they said, Oh my gosh, it'd be great to be in there. Um, so shout out to Jordan actually, cause she just added someone in the, um, sneak peek number one. And so did Morgan Brill. Like shout out to you guys. Cause you're still adding people to that. I think there were a couple more of you that did that. I did that too. So utilize that resource. If you don't know what to say when they're like, yeah, tell me more information. You're like, I don't know. Just tag them in the first video. Um, so we have that coming up team cup, uh, one more week left and let's go ahead and get this party started. So my friend Brittany, um, so in San Jose, there are zero super Saturdays. <laughs> um, they are maybe an hour, an hour and a half away from where I live. Well, um, I saw this one that was happening because my friend Nikki, who is joining our team, um, she's like, Hey, I heard about this one in San Jose. So I was like, Oh, all right, I'm going to go to that one. And I think Nikki was like, I'm not even sure if I can go anymore to it. Uh, which is funny, but she ended up going and, Brittany was hosting it and she was going to host it out of her apartment because she thought maybe a couple people would go, hoping a couple people would go. Well, 14 people, I think, reserved a spot. And she's like, shoot, I got to find a bigger place for this. Because again, there are, there are no coaches in San Jose. Like it, they're starting to come out of the word work a little bit. It's, it hasn't even been touched. In San Jose, there are over a million people, you guys. It's so funny that we get um, nervous about not having enough people where I'm like, I literally know five people here. <laughs> Like, and there's zero coaches, like a million. If Brittany, Nikki, and I were all going to split a million, we would have so many, right? Um, so I ended up going and as we were filling out this waiver, Brittany gave me a pen and you know, kind of when you go to these events, you're not really, you're not sure how it's going to be. Like, are people going to be really, um, egotistical and just being like, look at me, look at me. I'm this rank. I'm this and this. You just have that like feeling and I kind of was going in there prepared like all right like how is this Britney girl gonna be I didn't I've never told her that um so anyway she gives me this pen and I look at it and um it said South Bay and if you guys follow my snap story I'm trying to find it and it's the church I go to so I, I was literally like do you go to South Bay She's like, yeah, I do. I go to the 8.30 service. And I was like, shut up. So do I. So for six months, we had been going to the same church, same service, sitting only a couple rows away from each other. And this is during the point where I was like, oh my gosh, I just want to run into someone at the grocery store. Over a million people in San Jose, you just don't know um, anyone. And all I was wanting, because even in Milwaukee, you'd still run into people. And I was like, oh, I just want to run into someone in San Jose and make it feel like home. The next day, I ran into her at the grocery store. It was awesome. I was like, God is so good. And since then, Brittany and I, I was like, hey, I would love to help you with this Super Saturday. So we ran one together, uh, this last one, and now we're friends. <laughs> um, we talk, we FaceTime. She was just over at my house on Wednesday. I dog sit for her dog, Frankie. It's a little wiener dog. If you're following me on Snap, 
that's Frankie's mom. Um, and she's engaged to Charles and, um, yeah, she lives about 15 minutes away from me and has become one of my really close friends here. And I'm so grateful for her. So something that we collaborate on is I share a lot of our team with her and she shares a lot of the things that she's doing, uh, with me and we just collaborate. You guys, we don't benefit from each other at all. Um, we're on completely separate teams. She's to her to give her time tonight to Team Happy and Fit is just because she is being so gracious to do so. Um, she's a lifetime diamond. She's been a coach for three years, right, Brittany? Um, but she has a new fire in her. 2017 is totally a game changer for her. She's going into this year going, she, her goal is five-star elite. Um, she can do it. I know she can. Um, and the reason I know she can is because I've seen it done. And um, she rocks the challenge groups. I was at her house and she had like letters this big of all of her challengers. I'm like, what are you doing with that? She's like, oh, I hand read letters to all my challengers. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, okay, you have to teach me some things. So she's going to talk to you about being a CEO when it comes to challenge groups. I'm really excited. Brittany, go ahead and take it away. I love you, sister. Thank you so much for speaking for us tonight. Yay. Okay. Sorry. Sometimes on my computer, when I like get really excited to unmute, um, I, I straight up like swipe the screen away. <laughs> Anybody else do that on a Mac? So that's totally what I just did. I was like, ah, I lost everybody, but I'm here. Um, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Julianne, for that warm welcome. Um, I'm just so grateful, so grateful for your team guys. Cause your team, um, you have to know, first of all, that your team like has something really special. So the fact that, um, Sarah and Julianne have reached out to you, seen something in you, invited you into this opportunity and you're here tonight. Um, man, that just speaks worlds about you as a human being. And just, um, I mean, your team, it's just crazy. Like the wealth of knowledge that I get that I'm able to pour um, down into my downline. It's just, it's, it's priceless. So it's awesome. Thank you guys so much though for having me. I wanted to quick start and just introduce myself a little bit, give you a little background. I know Julianne gave a little bit of background about me, so I don't have to give you guys too much more, but um, since I am a little newer of a face for you guys, I wanted to just make sure that you knew who I was. So my name is Brittany and I also live in San Jose with Julianne. I moved here about a year and a half ago and um, and this business has been such a blessing because it's something that you can take with you, right? When I left Miami, Florida, um, I left as a school teacher. That's what I was there. I was an elementary school teacher. And while I love being a teacher and that is the gift that God gave me, I do not like teaching within the four walls of the classroom that... Um, our government and America and just public education in general kind of instills. I don't love being suffocated by the process and I don't love feeling like um, I'm under, you know, like a checklist of to do's that I just simply can't ever measure up to. So this opportunity, this business, um, it is exactly what I need in my life as somebody who loves to create and just loves to teach and educate. I had somebody ask me the other day if I'd ever go back to being a teacher again. And uh, I, <laughs> I had to laugh at them because I told them, honey, I am a teacher. I teach every day of my life. And so that is what I'm most excited about tonight is that I get to teach you guys. I get to do what I do best, which is teach other people. So I'm really excited. Um, it's funny when I met Julianne, we sat down to coffee after we had like officially met. And it's funny you say that Julianne, that you were suspect coming in because I could kind of read that body language from you that day that you know like okay what is this girl gonna do and I <laughs> the reality is I told him that day all I want to do guys is just become the backbone of this city I want to start something big and I want it to happen with us in no competitive manner and um, the same thing applies you know like I want you guys to get information tonight get nuggets there's gonna be a lot that I tell you but I want you to just be able to pull from it and start somewhere okay you don't have to conquer everything that I tell you tonight but um, but starting just getting that foot in the water and just diving in, right? Um, that's where you got to go with this. So making a plan after tonight is going to be super important. If some of this stuff is just like, wow, I haven't even thought of that, or I've never done that before. Planning for March, planning for April, planning beyond right now um, is going to be crucial. So that'll be something you'll want to sit down this week in the last week of February and really dive into. But um, that, so that day, um, I lost my train of thought for a second there. That day when um, I met Julianne, it was, it was simply just, I just wanted to create 
a backbone for us here in San Jose. So I'm really excited for that. But um, we sat down to coffee after that so that we could get together and so that we could kind of just get to know one, one another better and talk through, you know, where we were in our businesses and whatnot. And she told me that um, she doesn't know how uh, how I do it with challenge groups or how I bring challengers as coaches because for her she's like what you would call a band-aid ripper like she just dives all in she joined you know couch to coach is what she likes to say and she just dove all in and you know it's funny I did the same thing um, but for some reason I always really latched on to challenge groups even though um, I really didn't join because I had a challenge group experience. And so some of you, um, you can like show hands or whatever or comment, but how many of you guys joined this opportunity because a challenge group changed your life? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the gift we have to pay forward is that that opportunity, that group changed your life. So you get the chance to do that. But also you have to understand that challenge groups are the business. They're the essence of what we do in this business, right? Um, and so if you didn't join, if you were a Band-Aid ripper like Julianne and myself were, where you just dove in, you ordered your challenge pack, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, wait, what's a challenge group? Um, you know, this is where it gets really fun because you get to create your own little like club, your own little home, your own little like virtual gym, and it, you get to be the boss of all of it. So where does it start? Well, for me, it starts with three groups, okay? Um, and so you guys have to forgive me. I'm probably going to jump all the way around tonight in like 17 circles, but, um, I was like, I started getting a PowerPoint ready and then I was like, no, I just want to talk. I just want to talk. So if you need to stop me, I'm kind of like looking over here into the uh, comments and the chat. If you need to stop me and ask a question, please do, do not um, hesitate. Cause I, I want to be able to ask or um, answer those questions. So I start with free groups and I never used to do this. I'm going to tell you honestly, when I started as a coach, first and foremost, um, when I started as a coach, my upline coach, bless her heart. She never put me in a challenge group. Um, when I ordered T25 challenge pack, that's what I started with. Uh, I just got my challenge pack and then it was like, okay, here's coach basics go. And I never saw a challenge group. So everything I know is a challenge as, as somebody who hosts challenge groups is built off of either what I've learned in my own, on my own, just from researching or what I just want to bring to the table. Okay. Um, and so don't be afraid to do that, right? There's no cookie cutter. There's no cookie cutter to how you have to do this. Okay. Um, because I never actually witnessed a challenge group before hosting my very first one. And so um, feel fortunate though, if you have like seen a challenge group live in action, because at least you have a taste of what it's all about, right? But I was just pulling, I was just going for stuff. Like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. And, um, and so anyway, I started with free groups, right? Because that's how you want to gain some traction. You want as a, as a new business owner, maybe you don't have credibility yet right? So you're saying, Hey guys, I got this challenge group going on. And everybody's like, yeah, it's just another scam. I'm not joining her thing. I'm not paying her money. Right. Cause you don't have the trust built. Free groups are the way to let people know that you are straight up legit, that you are in it to just help people. There's a quote that I love, um, that says that you don't deserve to make an income if you aren't making an impact. And that quote, Oh, like a dagger in my heart when I heard that because I was like, wow, um, I truly, I truly believe that, right? How many people do you reach out to when you're inviting that tell you, yeah, I just can't afford it. Or yeah, um, I really, really like their why is huge. Like they truly do need help. Um, but they just can't get past whatever's in front of them currently, whether it's a financial reason or just the state of their busyness or whatever it is, right? They can't get around that. Free groups offer them an outlet to see a taste of you and who you are. And so for free groups, um, there's about a million ways to run them. I personally don't believe you should do a free group any longer than 10 days. But for me personally, I only do five days, Monday through Friday. Um, I might, you know, I'm in the free group and I'm talking to those people, um, you know, Saturday, Sunday, prior to it, I might wrap up on the Saturday, the opposite Saturday and Sunday sandwiched around it, of course. But the actual meat and potatoes of the group guys is going to be Monday through Friday. Um, and why do I do it that way? Well, because um, I'm giving them a, I'm giving them something free. But I've also run 30 day free groups, you guys. And trust me when I say you are just giving way too much of yourself for nothing. 
um, you are worth your, your insight, your support, your motivation is worth so much more um, than sometimes we give ourselves credit for. And I think sometimes we apologize for that by offering longer free groups. Please, if there's one thing um, I could advise you on, invest your, like give it your all, but like for five to seven days, right? Maybe 10 max, okay? Um, in the free groups, so I, when I first started running free groups, they sucked. They were bombs. They were awful. Um, people weren't engaged. Guys, it's going to happen. I still have free groups that sometimes bomb. And you know what? They're learning experiences. From that, you say, okay, what, what happened? Like maybe um, it was just the time of year. Maybe it was the type of, um, you know, take polls. Ask those people. What do you want to see from me next month? What, where did I go wrong? Not even where did I go wrong because it's not going wrong. But just where do you want to go in your health and fitness journey? And take polls. Figure that out for people. I like, because I'm super like elementary school teacher-esque, I love to make themes. So everything that I do is based around a theme um, of the month and those pretty much cater to like whatever that time of year is for example in the summer we did a summer swaps group that was the beginning of me getting back into free groups because that was me reminding myself Brittany you've got to add value to people and there's got to be a space for everyone for every no I hear they should never be a no for now Nobody should ever be a no for now and then you put them away. You say, I know you can't join my challenge group, but can I plug you into my free group? I've never had anybody say no to me on that. I mean, why would they? I've had people remove themselves from the free group once they get in it because maybe that's just not their, their thing right now and that's okay, that's on them. But I've literally never had somebody tell me no to a free group when I actually ask them. Um, so just keep that in mind. There, that makes a space and a place for everyone so that you can help anyone and everyone. And it's not simply about buying a challenge pack. So in the free group, um, like I said, I did summer swaps in the summer. We were, we swapped out, uh, like, you know, Chinese takeout for like healthier Chinese that you can make at home, carry out pizza for making your own personal pizzas, things like that. Okay. Um, then I did a crazy for my crock pot group in September because who doesn't love a crock pot, right? And we gave crock pot recipes. Uh, people love that one. Then in October, we did um, pumpkin everything challenge. That one was pretty cool. And so all the food was pumpkin related. I had a pumpkin inspired um, workout where you had to hold a pumpkin like as a medicine ball to do everything. Um, and so we did that and that was super fun. And then in uh, November, we did a planks and thanks challenge in December. Oh man, Mary, you, you might have to type and remind me what December was. Oh, I got it. Five days of fitness. Um, thank you. Five days of fitness. Um, and so that one was really cool. That one was really fitness focused and guys for five days of fitness. Uh, I kid you not. I just pulled 21 day fix. That's all I did. I mean, really, I, I adjusted a couple of things, but it was the, it was basically the same, um, outline as a 21 day fix workout would be right. Um, and then in January we did winter wellness because you got like winter blues. So we talked through that. And then this month we're doing a five day sugar reset and it starts tomorrow. Why? Cause, uh, hashtag Valentine's day. That's why. <laughs> Anybody else have like way too much chocolate? Like literally I just threw a box of chocolate away, you guys. Like you don't even know. I, I was like, Charlie, it's gotta go. <laughs> it's not good. Also yesterday, Charlie and I were bombarded by a little sweet Girl Scout and she sold us Thin Mints and I was like, <laughs> we can't buy them. But she was so cute, we couldn't say no. So we also have Thin Mints sitting in the fridge as temptation, but it's all good. We will make it. <laughs> We'll make it work. Um, but this one, this one is totally nutrition focused. So there's a couple ways you can do it. When you plug people into free groups, you can give them the option. I've done this before. When I did summer swaps, I gave them the option to create a free Beachbody account through me. Okay, so then that links them to you. There's a couple benefits with that. One, they're linked into your system. So if ever they go to purchase something on a whim one day, or maybe they're drunkenly watching an infomercial at night and they decide that they really need to do P90X, um, we know, right? See, been there, done that. Um, no. <laughs> But if we, if, if somebody does that right on a whim, cause people do that all the time. They're like, I just need to get in shape. Um, they're linked to you and you'll get the credit and then you can be like, Hey girl, blah, 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 blah. Um, so there's the benefit of that. The other benefit though, and this is what I really love is, um, is <laughs> Nikki drunk shopping. No, I don't drunk shop at least not for fitness programs. Um, <laughs> um, but the other benefit of that, guys, is I'm really big on email collecting. So we, we are very focused on social media and our business. Um, 
in a really sometimes unhealthy way, I think, because all of your messages, if all of your messages are locked into Facebook Messenger, right, or Instagram Messenger, whatever you use, and let's just say one day Mark Zuckerberg wakes up and he's like, big ol' middle fingers to everybody, and I don't feel like doing Facebook anymore, or I wanna change the rules of Facebook, or I wanna do this on Facebook, what are you gonna do? There went every single contact you have, you guys. Um, it's so important to build an email list. Two, two fun facts, well, two people that there's a fun fact about. So Shalene Johnson, and uh, Tony Horton both came out with a book at the exact same time. When she came out with 30 Day Push, he came out with a book. I don't even know the title. You probably don't even know the title either. Um, because, and he, he knows um, way more people. He has way more, at the time, he had way more following on social media. He was way more popular with his fitness programs. Um, the target market for people to purchase that book, it was projected that his sales would be through the roof. Um, and all Shalene had was a email list. And do you know that her book like demolished the sales of his and it was all because of just email people got emails reminding them that the book was going to be released reminding them that the book was going to be released reminding them the book was being released and um, she says a great thing if they don't want to be with you they'll get out of the car right like you drive with the people that you want in your car if somebody doesn't want to be with you get out of the car you want a different radio station honey i'm trying to drive right now get out of the car no you know like your people that you want in your car keep them in your car. So if you worry about like bombarding people with stuff like that, like emails and things like that, or you worry like about being too much sometimes, you guys, you got to just keep that mindset. If you're too much, then they don't need to be in your car. They don't want to be in your car, right? Because you'll never be too much to those people. So anyway, emails, that was a little tangent on that, but emails I feel are important. So that's also a way to generate their email because they have to plug that information in when they do sign up for a free, um, for a free like club membership, right? You can also do the free beach body on demand membership for those people during the trial. I've also dabbled with that one. But honestly, guys, when I did the summer swaps, I lost a lot of people's participation because they simply didn't want to do that. It was one step too many. And you might be sitting here thinking like, really? Like you can't even give me your email and like you want my help. Uh, I get it. But you never know because two years from now that person might need your help and they might be ready. So you don't want to give up on people. So I stopped doing that. My first group um, that I came back with this like gusto about doing free groups in the summer for summer swaps, I required that they did that. I no longer require that anymore. I don't really require much of anything, honestly. Um, I just try to make it an open forum for women to like inspire other women to just be better versions of themselves. Okay. So that's really my main motive. So you want to figure out what is your goal? Like, is your goal to get emails? Is your goal to, um, generate leads for your challenge group? Is your goal to, um, find new people, right? Like it, you have to figure that out. And so depending on your goal will depend and dictate the rules that the parameters and rules you put around it. Okay. Um, but just another like fun, thing to do guys is to right before the group starts i love to do giveaways and this and that and and you want to run ads i would or not ads i'm sorry you want to create an event page for it because that's where all of your exciting like activity begins right is inside that event page and you can really start to bring people in i always like to go live on the event page um and very similar to like when you guys do your coach sneak peeks right you're on that event page first um and so from the event page if somebody clicks interested or going they get added into the group interested or going, they get added into the group. Because remember, anybody can take themselves out of the group. Something I don't love doing is just putting people in groups. Um, because, and I'll tell you why, when Betty Sue, who's selling her um, Jamberry nails, throws me in a Jamberry group, it makes me angry. Because I didn't ask to be put in that group. I don't want to do those Jamberry nails. So I try to put myself in their shoes. So I like to be professional about it by creating an event, right? And then allowing them the opportunity to click going or interested. Yeah. And then once they do that, then I plug them in. Also for my free groups, I allow my downline who's not currently running free groups and who is like, they're, they're newer in the business. I allow them to be plugging people into these free groups as well, because this is an opportunity for them to bring um, some exposure to what it is we do as coaches. Okay. So as the leader, I try to make sure that although it is, you know, quote unquote, my free group, um, I, I try to make it our free group. I try to, you know, make sure that the other coaches have assignments and tasks to do or that they get in there and they engage with the people. Um, and so that's what we do. So when I did that first free group, you guys, you've got to like, look at the scope of this. I, I tag teamed that group with another coach on my team. And we had, um, I want to say we had like 38 people in the summer swaps group. Right. Okay. 
Then comes September when we did the Crock-Pot group. That group grew to, I want to say like 80 some people. Okay, that's pretty cool, yeah? Um, and then when we moved on into October, that group grew to over 200. And then in November, December, January, now we're at, I think, 319 people in the group. Now, let me just tell you, I don't ever remove people from the group. I change the banner on the group. I keep all the resources. I don't even delete the posts. I don't do any of that stuff. It is just an ongoing change. I change the name of the group the week before we dive into the next um, free group. I change the banner and then I upload all the files and everything there. Why? Because timing isn't perfect for everybody. I've got a lot of people that I reached out to this week about the free group um, that said, you know, I can't do the sugar reset this week because X, Y, and Z is going on in my life, but I really want to do it. Well, great. Maybe they can do it next week. Maybe this week inspires them to now next week do the sugar reset, but they still have their fingers on those resources, right? Um, and so they're able to grab those. So I don't take anybody out of the group. If somebody wants to be removed from the group, they'll do it themselves, right? And I have people do that, and that's A-OK. -okay. Um, and that's, it's totally fine. Let me just look to the side. I think there's a question. Um, hey, here's... how do you, trans so this is what, I, like, you have one group that doesn't change on Facebook, which I love. Like, that is brilliant. Think about it. Fortunate follow-up. That's a constant follow-up. Um, I'm going to have some follow-up questions probably. So do you put, you're going to probably talk about your transition. I think a huge thing, this is what I see coaches doing a lot, is that they don't know how to transition. I remember this awkward phase from your free group to your longer challenge group. What does that transition look like? I'm assuming you make a post in your group saying, hey, I have this bigger challenge coming up. But, um, and I just see coaches keeping this. It's, it's like if you treat your business like a minimum wage job, that's what you're going to get paid. But if you treat your job like a volunteer job, that's what you're going to get paid, right? And I see so many coaches doing that where they feel guilty about moving, where it's like, you're not going to go to your doctor and say, hey, can you not get paid? Would help me with my ankle. Like that's just not going to be. So what does that transition look like? Okay. Um, so when I'm in these free groups, you guys, let me start with right now. So there's there's personal messages and Charlie was like, Brittany, you are crazy. Are you kidding me? Because yesterday, not yesterday, two days ago, I sent out, there's about 300-ish people in the group, right? And so yesterday I sent out 150 messages. They're all the same, but they're not the same in like the creeptastic way. So let me just, I want to pull it up and read to you what I said, because there's a message process, Julianne, that I go through. So I want to take you through what that process looks like. Um, and so, by the way, I cater to women. So um, I don't let, allow men in the group. So my, my language is usually, hey girl, or hey love, or hey friend, things like that, right? So I put, hey love, I'm so excited to start on Monday with the sugar reset. Is there anything you need help with this weekend? Please let me know. I can't wait to do this with you, XOXO Brittany, right? So I sent that out to a lot of people. That was half. I'm going to send the other half out tonight, okay? Every single person who's in that group. Now, some of those people in that group are from like, you know, August when we did the summer swaps, right? And so some of them aren't actually even prepping to do the group, but the, all of a sudden they get that message from me, like, oh wow, she's, ex you know, like that. I'm showing them that I'm doing this with you, that I'm excited. And please, before we start, let me know if I can help you. What do you need from me? Brittany, that's genius. So literally, you send a message every single month. And if someone has been in your group for three years, they get a message from you at least once a month. You guys, are you listening to this? Fortune in the follow up. Like that is only going to build that. That is brilliant. That is so smart. And there's a lot of people, guys, that, you know, I've never, they've never responded. That doesn't mean that it's not impacting them. Okay. You've got to remember that too. Um, because, because just, just because they're not following up with you, there could be a lot of reasons behind why they are afraid to respond to you and just not maybe ready, but they are watching. So you've got to keep that in mind. And that doesn't dictate whether or not we show up and send those messages. So I start with making sure that everyone knows I'm so happy that they're doing it with me. Okay. I make it a point to let them know it's with me that I need that right for help, that this isn't me just you know, like I need a sugar reset guys. I wish you knew my birthday was this last week and I made cupcakes cause I thought, you know, like they're small, like rather than make a big old cake, guys, I should have made the stupid cake cause I ate pretty much every cupcake myself. Um, and then some, so anyway, I need the sugar reset, like, whoa. So I start with that. So I send that to everybody. Now 
obviously that's a lot of people. So, you know, you, you take it in stride. Maybe your idea is not to send it to everybody, but maybe, um, you send it to all the people who in, are engaged already. Right. Or maybe all the people that hit going and interested on your event page. Right. Cause remember some of these people are people from the past groups that just might be flies on the wall. Okay. So I send that to everybody. Now what's going to happen is midweek Wednesday, I'm going to send another message. It'll be very similar. It'll be a blanket message, but it'll sound like I'm talking to them. It'll be another, hey girl, hey girl, I am having, like this week is so challenging, um, but I know that it's going to be such a benefit for us. What are you feeling so far, right? Talk to me about how you're feeling so far. That way they're getting a midweek check-in. Right now, if they never responded to me, this is where my job was, is going to get maybe a little easier. If they didn't, if they never responded to me from the initial, like, how can I help you? Then I probably won't send them that message. Right. Yeah. Um, it'll be all the people that responded from there at the very end of the group. I will also send another private message. Hey girl, you totally crushed this week. I'm so proud of you. Um, it, you know, I, I just want you to know that this month I'm, I'm running a blah, 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 right? And from there, but you, you, you send them then the invite personally, right? But in the groups, I also do a video at the very end. My last video that I do is call to action. My last video of the group is going to be a call to action to my challenge group. How do I design my free groups? I always put them one week buffer between the start of my challenge and um, the end of the free group. So this week is my free group. Next week will be nothing. The next group, the next week is the start of my challenge group. And that's what I do each stinking month. Okay. So the, I always make sure sometimes with like Thanksgiving and Christmas, it got a little hairy because of the holidays, right? Cause you want to time it out that you're not like running into like, yeah, let's sugar reset on new year's Eve. You know, like it's crazy. So you want to also look at the calendar, but I, um, I try to make sure that I, I line it up that way each month. I'm going to look to the side really quick because I see some questions and I really don't want to miss them. Um, uh, la, 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 la. Okay. So I did the first question was something about challenge groups and Facebook versus challenge tracker app. Guys, I use challenge tracker app for beach body challenges. Uh-huh. My Facebook group is my free group. Okay. So from my free group, then they get the VIP treatment. That's what I call it. That's what I let them know. You get more of me, right? If you loved this, you are going to love my challenge group. Okay. Um, do you have a marketing plan? Same dates for all your challenge groups each month. Kind of just talked about that. I look at the month. I try to be, um, meticulous about my plan is pretty simple or similar month to month. Whereas like the free group is a week, um, buffer between that and the challenge group. My challenge groups are typically a four week challenge group where I have a week zero and three weeks. I'm going to talk about challenge groups in a second. Um, and then I always end my challenge group. My last week of the month is always my coach sneak peek. So after that's the other call to action that I do, you guys, I always put like, Hey, there's been a bunch of people asking me about what I do as a coach. Just so you know, I'm going live on Monday night uh, next week talking about the coach opportunity. Please let me know if you'd love me to tag you so that you don't miss it. Boom. So I also do a call to action to the coaching opportunity. Um, by the way, I say so many people have been asking me. Nobody's asking me. Nobody asked me anything, but they don't know that. So I say it, right? Um, let's see. Uh, marketing plan. She keeps the same group page that's going. All the people stay in one place, the group and not the event page, right? Yeah. So from the event page, guys, it goes to a group. So the event page turns to the group. So this week, it was all about the event page. I talk in the event page. I post in the event page. I'm hyping them up in the event page. A couple things. Like I shared with them in the event page um, about like eight reasons you need, you would have to need a sugar reset. And I was like, Hey, who can relate? Like I put, I straight up was like, guys, I am like with my jaw on the floor right now that all of these are me. Like you love carbs or you have sweets after dinner. I was like, which one is totally you? So I'm, I'm getting engagement going there on the event page. Um, and sometimes I'll post like a funny meme, like, uh, Julianne actually had the meme idea in your group this week. And so I was like, Oh, I'm going to take that over to the event page. And I asked them to post their favorite food memes because why not? That's funny. Right. And now we can laugh about food because it's funny. Um, let's see, uh, how large will you allow that group to get as large as it gets? I will never delete people. I will never take anybody out of the group unless of course they need to be removed for foul play. Um, start deleting information. Never. I don't think, I don't see, I guess if I had a reason why I would need to delete information slash, um, 
the resources, but I don't see the need to because I just feel like, let's say, um, you know, and here's the deal, guys. Honestly, what person do you know that's going to go back and read every single post that I've ever done in that group? And if they do, <laughs> like, cool. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, how do you have time for that, right? Like, if they truly went back and read every single post I did in the free group, girl, you need to be a coach because you got too much time on your hands. <laughs> like, you got to do something with that time. Um, so, yeah, so I just leave it. But let's say um, next year around the fall, I'll probably reuse all that information. And you know what? If they've already been in the group, there'll be enough new people in the group that they won't have seen it. And if there's people in the group that have seen it already, honey, it's time to join a challenge group if you're sick of hearing about me. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's all it is, right? I can't apologize for that. So, and, and there's people too, like I have people who do my group month after month after month, my actual challenge group. And they're like, this is the same post that you did last year at this time. I'm like, then it's time to be a coach. Like stop. <laughs> like if you're like, yeah, of course it is the same post. Like, what do you think? I reinvent the wheel every month? No, work smarter, not harder. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers the question, Jessica, that I'm not going to let the group, I just let the group go. Um, message the entire group. It's a lot. Yeah. And so I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, Brittany, like that's a lot of people to message. Yeah. I made that choice two days ago that I would do that. I didn't have to do that. I could also, like I said, just message the people from the event page only that said they were going slash interested. I could reach out and message people who are commenting and liking on stuff or posting in the group. I could do that. Um, making personal connection. Yes. All that. So I planting seeds. Absolutely. Sending a message before that. If it is their first challenge of what makes you interested or what are you trying to get out of it type of thing? Um, maybe honestly. So most of the people that I'm inviting based off of the, um, based off of the like event page are people that I've already been kind of forming relationships with anyway. So most of those people, I, I already have a little convo going with. Um, uh, but that is a great idea. You could totally do that for like new people. So this was awesome. And this was so like Christmas time. My heart was freaking bursting you guys, because when we did five days of fitness, um, we did it right between Christmas and new year's, the 26th through whatever the 30th. Right. And it was perfect because like, you know, people don't have work a lot of times during that time and they're home and they're kind of already starting to think about losing that weight for 2017. And so it was really exciting. And so what my coaches did, I didn't even tell them to do this. You guys, it was so awesome. I was like, proud mama. Um, we started, whenever we added somebody new into the group, they would shout them out. So let's say today, um, I add Julianne into our, our free group. I would add her to the group and then immediately, Hey guys, can you welcome Julianne Condia into the group? I'm so excited that she's decided to check out the sugar reset this month with us. She is going to rock it. And then all the coaches on my team who are in that group who know better, they would comment, Oh my gosh, welcome. Hello. And then everybody's like welcoming them. And before they even do anything, they feel so welcomed into the free group. So we did that in December. That was a thing that started then it worked so well now in January and in February, every time we add somebody brand spanking new to the group, we give them an individual personal shout out. Cause imagine as the group is growing in size and numbers, we are keeping, you got to keep track of who these people are right? I'm not just adding masses and masses. So yeah, the number is big, but remember this has been over time. This isn't like just this month I added 300 people. No, I probably added, you know, 20 extra people this month. Right. And so those 20 people are getting some nice treatment to welcome them in. Okay. Um, also you want them to know that it's not like, it's not another scam, right? I'm not just putting you in this group because I want your money. I don't want anything from you. Right. I don't want anything from them. I just want them to feel like they have a space in this world to just be them and to be a healthier, happier version. That's all I want, right? Um, I want somebody to finally give them a chance. I want it to work for them. Um, <clears throat> and when you come at it with that mentality, you guys, it changes everything in your business, right? Because I, I trust me, <laughs> I've done the business long enough that I've had other mentalities, right? Um, do to do to do. Sorry, I'm just really trying to answer all these questions really quick before I move on. Do you make an event page for your longer challenge? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. I do. Um, love it. Love it. Love it. Are you making graphics for all those welcome posts? Nope. I just, I just make sure I'm, they're tagged. 
Yeah, I just make sure they're tagged. Um, in January, there were a lot that I had to do at one time. It was a big bulk, like mass shout out. So I did do a graphic for that and I did like a welcome with a heart. And then I put, I tagged everybody in it that I was welcoming because I wanted to welcome them all at the same time. But then from there, if it's like I'm adding, you know, like somebody requests to be added into the group, I accept the request to be put in and then I, I shout them out. Um, cool. La, 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 la. Are you sending messages? Only those that you add or everyone that's in there. This time around, I did everybody that's in there. Um, because I'm going to share something with you that's like really hard for me to say right now. Guys, I don't have any successful points. <laughs> what day is it? <sighs> it's like January. No, see, I don't even know what month it is. It's like December. <laughs> I'm going in the wrong way. It's like February 27th and I have none. And so, you know what? I'm busting my butt. And so I messaged all of them. Yeah, I did. But you don't have to. You don't have to. It's your business, guys. You, you figure out what works for you, right? But yeah, I don't have any success club points right now and I refuse to go down like that. So um, yeah, that's what that is. Okay, so I'm gonna move into, um, so I transition. I talked through a little bit of the transition from the free group. You pick themes, this and that. I just wanna show you guys, I'm gonna share the screen, screen really quick. I just wanna show you guys, um, which one would it be? Google Chrome, here we go. I just want to show you guys a little bit. Um, let me pull this down. I want to show you Streak. I don't know if you know Streak and um, all that inside of Google, inside the Googles. But in your Gmail, you have these pipelines that you can download. That you can. It's like a download thing that you have to add. You have to be in Chromecast. You cannot be in like Firefox to use it. But here you have different pipelines you create. Now, let me just show you. Um, this is not updated just yet for the sugar reset, so you have to forgive me. But I want to show you how this looks. So I'm going to move this over here so that we can see. Can you guys see this? I, I hope you can see this. Okay, cool. So interested in the group. This is where I would plug in people who are interested. Once I add them to the group, I put them here. If they're currently already a challenger, but they're in my free group too, I have them here so that I already like, you know, I'm not trying to waste all my time. Um, maybe they've had past interest in the group. Um, and then from here, okay? So like these are the people who um, didn't join the group or they left the group, right? This is where like if Suzy Q left my group, oh, why would you do that, Suzy? Um, she would go back into past interest <clears throat> so that maybe later I could invite her. But Right here, look, sent initial form. So once I add everybody into the added to group, right, my sent initial form, I would move them into this pipeline. From sent initial form, if we're talking, once they answer me, I put, them that, I put that we're in convo because they're talking to me. Then from the people that are in convo, I'm gonna directly invite them by Friday. And then if they want the information email, I'd send it to them. If they tell me no for now, I put them here. And if I add them into the badass boot camp pipeline, that's going here, right? And then I'm just going to show you all this really quick. So this helps me keep track of where those names are going because it can be a lot. Where is the pipeline? No, I don't want dress. There we go. Badass. Okay, so from here, now again, this is also a little outdated. It's from the last month. But all my leads. So this is anybody that I'm working on currently, um, forming relationships with sent direct invite, follow up. Okay, so this is where like, once I send them the direct invite from that group, I'd put them here, I'd add them into this, into this streak, but however you're tracking, but I'm just showing you like how I would track it. So from there, I wanted to make sure I follow up with them if I haven't heard back from them. Maybe I sent them the additional info, um, following up, no for now. They submit an application, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Um, ordering their challenge pack, I sent them those steps to order it. Okay, they finally ordered it, so I send them a welcome email and their goodies. I add them to the challenge group, and then as I'm in the challenge group each week, I make sure I reach out to them and follow up, week one, week two, week three. Then I make sure that I invite them to coaching, if they're not already a coach. Then I add them to the next group. If they decided they don't wanna be a coach, then maybe they need to be in the next group. Maybe they're opting out of the group for this month. And then I have a place for thank you cards so that I know that I've done that. So let me come back to you guys and talk through that. So Streak is awesome, um, and there are a million and a half uh, YouTube tutorials on Streak. So um, 
if you if that looked like something that you're interested in definitely check it out because it is awesome and it keeps it very organized but the case in point is that you're tracking it so everybody has a place to move to so when you're saying like I talked to somebody, like I already sent them the initial form that I'm excited. Okay, so those people that responded to me are gonna go into the next space. And then after they're in this next space, then I'm going to send them into maybe the follow up from the form, right? Like how they're doing midweek. And then I'm gonna send them into an invite, right? And then from there, and we just keep moving and moving. But now let's talk about the challenge groups. Your challenge groups, once that person decides, like that's where I gotta go, that's, that's what I've gotta do, it's gotta be a place that's like a family. Okay. It's got to be a place that is like a club or a community. It's got to be fun and engaging. And trust me when I say I've had plenty of challenge groups that are not fun and not engaging. And you feel like you're talking to the wall and it's terrible. It's a terrible feeling. I've been there and I get that. Um, but you're there to change people's lives, right? You're there to build relationships with people. So when I get into my challenge group, um, one of the very, very first things you might've seen that I send them a welcome email and goodies. I've created a seven day meal planner, okay, that I send them. Um, and I send them, I've also created, let me grab it. I created a, like a grocery shopping list meal planner thing, see? Um, and I send them that PDF. I also send them a PDF of my favorite Shakeology recipes because no friend ever lets a friend drink a bad shake. Keep that in mind right? You want them to have their shake delicious. You don't want them to have vanilla and water on their first shake and then be like, I don't like Shakeology. Of course you don't. That's terrible. Um, so I make sure that they have good recipes in their hand. Um, and then what's the other one? Oh, and a goal setting document that I set for them. Okay. So those are things, but guys, again, these are things I've created over time. The very first challenge group that I ran, my welcome email and my goodies, it was just the meal planner. And then I realized, you know what guys, they need, they need like a goal setting document. They need something in front of them so that they can write their goals out. Right. So I created a goal setting document and then I was like, okay, you know what? People ask me all the time. How do I like, how do I do my meal planning for the week? They need that resource. So I created it. And then the whole Shakeology thing, I just think it's important that you give them good recipes. Right. And so it evolved over time, but I have a template saved, um, on my computer that I just send them. It's a welcome email and I let them know just the ins and outs of the group getting ready to start. Okay. I let them know, like, you know, I'm so excited that you made that purchase. Um, you know, our group is going to be starting on March 6th. Just be on the lookout for the email for the app so that you can accept the app and get into it. In the meantime, I wanted to share some goodies with you, et cetera, et cetera. And so I, I send them those PDFs. Okay. And then I, and then I plug them into the group. I text them. Or I send them, if they have an iPhone, I send them voice memos on Fridays. Fridays are my days that I like to send one-on-one -on -one messages to my challengers. So usually after week zero, Friday, I do a week zero, which is like planning and prep. And then I have three weeks, okay, typically. Unless the calendar needs to adjust or like I'm doing a like quarter force and it's like time specific, right? Um, and so... I send them a message on Fridays and I let them know like, Hey, I'm thinking of you. Um, you are rocking it this week. Is there anything I can do to help you? So usually week zero, I reach out and I ask, what can I do to help? Right. Um, on week one, well, that's where, I mean, we're all like, imagine you just finished your first week of like your brand new workouts and Shakeology. You're probably on fire. You feel pretty good. Right. Cause it's not hard yet. Your mind hasn't started playing those tricks yet. So I just continue that wave of like, um, how exciting this week was, right? Like, oh my gosh, you rocked it. That was so awesome. Um, in week two, I send encouragement because that's where the voices start to kick in. That's where the voices start to um, tell them that they should just go back to the couch, right? Or this one cookie is not going to be a big deal. Or just order the pizza, Brittany, you know, right? <laughs> order the pizza, Brittany. <laughs> that, can you tell that's like the voice that's always in my head? Shocking. I love pizza. Um, so those are things. So in week two, I send them an encouragement message, right? Or I find a graphic on Pinterest. That's like, you know, something like really motivational. And I just, I, I send that to everybody in my group. And then, um, <laughs> she's wearing her pizza pants. <laughs> and then in week three, um, I like to send them on Friday. Hey, I go back to the challenge tracker app guys, where they, they put their original goals. And I, on week three, I, I tell them their original goal. Hey girl, I'm so proud of you. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I was looking back on your original goal of working out five times a week and drinking your shake seven days a week. I want to know how do you feel about that goal? 
How do you feel you did? Right? Um, so sending them every Friday, sending your challengers a one-on-one -on -one personal text message, text message or voice message on, on text if they are iPhone, um, has been just game changer, right? Because they're here, they are a text away and they know I'm a text away. Yeah. And so they, they, they see that I'm like, I'm in it. Like I'm there, I'm fighting with them. I always like to say, I'm in that ring with you. I'm fighting with you. Um, and so that, that's, that's been a big game changer. Honestly, the biggest game changer is me. You're the biggest game changer in your challenge group, right? How to run it like a CEO. It's you. How do, how, how do you want to run it? What do you want from them? I always try to put myself in their shoes because as, the, as you get further and further in your business, you get further and further removed from what it's like to start that journey, right? And, um, and it, so I try to put myself in their shoes. Like, what's it like? Man, I need a goal setting document. Or man, I, need, I needed help with meal planning. The other thing I don't do though, guys, is I never give them a, um, a grocery list in any group, free or paid. Um, and why? Because you have to teach them. Give them resources so that they can learn how you do it, but don't give them what you do, right? Because that's not, imagine if your school teacher took your test or, or did your homework for you, right? And did your workbook assignments for you in math class. And then you sat down on the day of the math test and you tried to take it. Would you do well? No, because they did it for you. Right. And so I tell them that I'm not going to give you a grocery list. I'm going to teach you how to make a grocery list. I'm going to teach you how I do that. And then you can go as an adult, you can figure it out. You're an adult, right? So like figure it out. If you really want it, you're going to make a grocery list. If you don't want it, you're not. And it's all good. Right. I can only, I can only help people so much and you can only help people so much. You have to, they have to meet you somewhere, right? They have to want it enough. Um, but also knowing their whys. So I also said that in the beginning, um, I send an application. Sorry, I'm bouncing way back. I'm going way back now. I send an application in the very beginning when somebody says, it, it's always like a hey girl message, right? So I just want to kind of, I call them hey girl messages. I think you guys do, do too. Um, which I always feel bad because there's like one badass dude on our team and I'm like, hey girl, sorry guys. Oh, I want to tell you guys what my Hey Girl message was to, to send people, because I did send some individual messages out for this free group, and I put, Hey Girl, happy Valentine's Day. These were on Valentine's Day that I did this. I was just thinking of you and wanted to let you know that next week I'm running a sugar reset in a free women's only Facebook community. I would love to have you in it and help keep me accountable. I've literally ate way too much sugar the last few days. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Let me know if you'd be interested. It's going to be fun, right? Like very, very non-threatening, not not anything, you know, if they don't respond, they don't respond. Um, so whenever I do like the fitness group, Hey Girls, I always end it with, um, uh, let me, I'm trying to find a good one. Where's the last one I did? I always end it with asking for their, uh, if they'd like me to email them more info. Remember in the beginning, I said, take it back to email. It makes you look more professional. It gets you out of Facebook land and it puts you in a CEO's chair, right? Because now you're going to email them. Now you look different than the person that's just sending them messages on Facebook. So I always like to take it to email. It's also a great way for me to keep it organized, right? Because I can always go back to that email. I don't have to scroll through a million Facebook messages. I can get into my inbox and find that. So in the email, um, I, I have a link, okay? I have a link to an application. Now, some of you guys use Google Docs for your applications, maybe JotForm but I always put an application. Why? Because then I don't have to sit around and ask a million questions. I can form my relationship and I can figure out why they need this group um, in that document, right? What kind of time do you have to commit to your workouts? Figure out the time that they have. Uh, can you please talk me through your big goal? Like, what do you want? What do you really want? What's your biggest goal? What would losing weight and, um, allow you to do? How would it make you feel? Ask about what it, like, what would that do for you, right? How would you feel? Um, know that they're always going to be, you want to figure out their goals. You want to figure out um, what they want, but also know that you've got to figure out their limitations and their struggles, right? Because remember, and it's not the fun, this is the, this is like the hairy, scary, like ugly part of our job sometimes is that it's not all flowers and roses. We don't just want to find out their goals and then do a before and an after, right? No, we actually have to find out where they struggle. Because if we don't know where they struggle, how are we going to be there to pick them up, right? And so know that there will always be limitations of no time, no support, right? My, my husband doesn't support me. I don't have time to do it because I'm always taking care of the kids and, and I don't have anybody to give them to or whatever. Uh, there are limitations that they're not in shape yet, right? Uh, they don't have money. 
Um, they, maybe they don't follow through on things. Oh, I've always given up in the past, right? Know that those are opportunities. They will come up every time. And I used to be so afraid of them. When people would tell me that limitation, I would shy away and be like, okay, I understand that you don't have money. Um, maybe next month, right? Now I, I break it down. You know, I get excited about that opportunity to really get to know them better. Okay. And that doesn't necessarily mean that all of a sudden when I tell them that, you know, Shakeology is cheaper than the, the meal they're having for breakfast currently, that they're going to join the challenge group. That doesn't necessarily mean that, but I'm, I'm not going to just let people go based off their limitations, right? Because that's when it gets scary in our business. That's when it gets hard. Um, you relate and match. I love the feel felt found idea, right? So when somebody says, um, you know, Brittany, I don't have money for this group. It's just, it's really hard right now. And I go, you know, girl, I know how you feel. Listen, I felt the same way when I started this business, but what I've found by doing these challenge groups is X, Y, and Z. And you let them know like that you get it. That's one of the things that I love to do now. When somebody says, I used to respond uh, when somebody would say money or whatever, and I'd like an objection, right? And I, I respond with my, um, it just, you know, I'd shy away like, okay, sorry, didn't mean it. And then, um, but now, sorry, Frankie's freaking out. I don't know if you guys can hear him. He's mad at something. Frankie. I have to bring him on soon. Um, <laughs> here he is right here. Hold on. He is my favorite dog ever. He's so cute. Oh, look at that. <laughs> He's so mad. You're such a distraction. Get out of here. Um, sorry about that. No, so, you're good. Like the light of my life. So I used to shy away from those objections, right? Or those um, limitations that people would say. But now I try to let them know, like, girl, I get you. I get it. Because, like I said, when you start to get to a place in your business where you're a little bit removed from the beginning of your journey, you've got to take them back and remind them that you know what it felt like to be in their shoes right? And so feel felt found is a great way if you're very, really nervous about the invitation process and that whole getting to know you um, and that whole like limitation objection idea. When you get into the feel felt found, all of a sudden you're relating with them. You're meeting them where they are. Yeah. Um, are there rules in your groups? You should set rules. You should set, um, you know, First of all, when your group doesn't work, if a challenge group doesn't work, quote unquote, that's not an opportunity to say, it just doesn't work. This business doesn't work. Nobody, nobody does. Guys, I had like a year and a half of crappy challenge groups where I was like, can somebody just talk? And now they, they are so much more engaged in our groups, but that's because I figured out how I had to change things. How do I do it differently? Right. Am I really engaged? Um, so I set expectations up front. I let people know what I expect of them. And I straight up use that terminology. This is what I expect from you. This is what you can expect from me. So I let them know what I can, uh, what they can expect from me also, because I make it fair. I don't want them to think that I have this list of expectations for them and that I'm just like here, like bossing them around. No, I want you now to also know what to expect from me. You're going to expect to post at 5 a.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Pacific time from me every single day. You're going to expect that um, I'm gonna comment on everything they do in that group, you guys. You guys, comment on their stuff. If they took the chance, some of these people are scared out of their mind to post a sweaty selfie. Do you know how many people in our groups have never posted a selfie in their lives and all of a sudden they get in this app and they have to post one? It's scary stuff for them, it really is. Um, and so letting them know they're beautiful. Like they'll post, I'm like, man, you look good. Man, look at that smile. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you, right? And just encouraging them, loving on them. When they're having a hard day, um, letting them know that it's okay, but also switching it up. The other day I asked in the group, I love to ask questions throughout the week to get them engaged. Um, and I had them, we're working in this February group, it's called Love the Skin You're In. Um, that's another thing, I have a hashtag for that, Love the Skin You're In. And I like to create a hashtag for every group so that the people who are participating, when they get on social media, they also are using that hashtag and it creates a lot of community and engagement beyond the four walls of our um, app. So um, when I asked the group last week, we're doing, in Love the Skin You're In, we're doing journaling every night. 
self-love journaling. So my, my morning post is based on fitness and motivation. My evening post is based on self-love journaling. Okay, so I had them in the beginning, get a journal. They also had to snap a picture and upload that to the group to show us what journal. And we commented, oh my God, girl, that journal's awesome. Where'd you get that? Like, oh, I love the cover of that journal. It's so cool, right? Like, you get them to know each other. They already know you. They've got to learn how to become sisters. I tell them to make, um, one of my first posts is telling them to friend each other on Facebook. Friend each other on Facebook. Okay. So I want all of you, that's your first assignment, not all of you, but the first assignment for all the challengers in the group is to friend each other because I want them to see what, what's happening. Right. Cause then when, when Jenny in the group all of a sudden posts her sweaty selfie and says how awesome the group is, maybe Becky in the group who was really nervous about all this sees that and it fuels her like, wow, she's doing it too. And they see each other beyond the app. Right. Um, and that's coach behavior too. When you see Jenny po post on social media and Jenny's not a coach yet, that's coach behavior. You already, you already have ammo for that. Like, Hey girl, I saw you totally like freaking posted your before and after the other day. Uh, hello. That's awesome. Have you ever considered being a coach? Right? Like you are rocking it. Um, people look up to you. They are inspired by you. So that's, um, so I have them friend each other on Facebook, but anyway, back to the question that I asked, cause I've totally gone on a tangent with that. Um, I asked them in their journals to forgive themselves. I wanted them to forgive themselves. And I told them, you don't have to comment with this one. Some days I tell them, I want you to comment with what you put in your journal or snap a picture of your journal for us today. Um, but the other day I told them they didn't have to comment with the forgiveness because it can be hairy, scary. Like I get it. That's, that's really a vulnerable activity that I'm asking them to do. And so, but I told them, I want you to forgive yourself for one thing. And, um, Everybody put, you know, everybody who commented put, I forgive myself for uh, beating myself up all these years, or I forgive myself for not thinking I'm a perfect mom. I forgive myself for this. I forgive myself for that. And it was really touching. Um, but what also was touching was that there was a woman that said, I'm going to forgive myself for, and then she said what she was going to forgive herself for. And I got in there and I commented and I said, turn the language around. Not, if you say you're going to forgive yourself, that means you haven't done it yet. So I want you to say it like you did it today. What are you waiting for? Right? And so I get there and I get there next to them in the dirt, you guys. I get in the dirt with them. I don't just, um, it's not just about shakes and workouts for me. Right? It's about letting women know that they're enough. Letting women know that, that there is a community there that will support them and help them to grow, right? In all facets, in all facets of life. So, um, so that is really exciting. But I set that precedent that we, and you know, and they do, they, I mean, they get so guilty. They're like, Brittany, I'm so sorry that I haven't been present in the group. And I'm like, don't care. Like, I mean, I care, but like, they get really like guilty about it, you know? And so setting those expectations, right? Um, up front for people, I think is really important. Um, I'm gonna kind of pause there because I've given you guys like a million and a half loads of information. Um, and I want to take questions because I know it's getting later and later and later as I talk. So I wanted to open it up and see if there were questions or, or anything for me that I could continue with. You're incredible. I felt the power of that and <laughs> legitimately got goosebumps. Jordan said, do you have the same expectations for the free group? Um, I set expectations. And I let them know, so I do a live video, and I tell them what I expect of them and what they can expect of me, and it is what it is because it's free. I feel like I'm a little harder. Once you decide, once you decide that you want to run with me in a challenge group um, and that you, that you believe in me enough to take you on this path, because there's a sense of belief. They have to believe in me to want to join the challenge group. They have to believe that I can fix whatever their problem is. Right? And so if they, if they pour that belief into me, then they've got to know that like I'm there on the awesome days, but also they're kind of on the ugly days. And I will let you know if you're not holding up to the, to your end of the bargain. Right. And we'll fix it. I'm a solution it's, seeker though. I don't love like just having problems and not resolving. Them. And you guys have to remember these free groups are just a taste. Like Brittany can't pour everything she has into these free groups because that's just going to take away from her longer ones. So they're going to be brief. They're going to be not as intense. They're going to be more vague powerful enough but in her like that's what I want you guys to all realize too because I think a lot of um and I did this in the beginning is you're pouring everything into all of this where people aren't actually committing where you have to ask yourself are you committing every day like do you drink a shake every day do you follow a program every day 
and you have to think like that, that you invested in it. So you can't sell yourself short based upon all those other people, if that makes sense. Um, they want to know about, you know what? Um, how about this? Brittany is in our team page. I'll make a graphic uh, with this. And Brittany, if they ask questions below there, would you be able to answer them? Um, they're just wanting to know your messaging and then wanting to know um, yeah. what they do to continue in your groups. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you want me to answer those real quick here? Yeah, or? let's answer those real fast and then we'll wrap it up. Other questions for sure on the page. Yeah. Um, message people throughout your weekly one on one. So people who never responded to your initial message. You mean the um, Samantha, are you talking about the challengers that I'm doing the one on one? Weekly one on one? Yeah. So if they don't respond to me, I know they're falling off the deep end. Right? I know they're falling off the deep end. And so I just keep sending it. Because eventually they'll send me an apology text saying, Brittany, I suck. And then we fix it and then we get better, right? It's all about growing. It's a journey, right? It's a journey. And so that's, this is where I'll answer that next question. What do you do with challengers who just want to continue? We continue, guys. This is a journey. You are on a journey. I have coaches in my challenge groups. Why? Because they drink their shakes. They're doing their workout. They're, they're taking care of themselves. Of course, they're going to be in my challenge group. If I don't put my coaches in my challenge group and they're not running challenge groups, then what's going to happen to their self-care? I know what's going to happen. They're going to quit. So I'd rather they stay with me and keep riding the wave of my challenge groups, right? Then, um, then leave this business and, and everything that it can offer them. Um, and then I don't automatically put anybody in my future group. They have to, they have to request to be added in, but yes, I do have a lot of rollover from month to month for sure. And think about it. If they're investing in it, I even have people, if they're not on HD still, but they reach out to me and they have, anytime anyone has gotten something from me, they're a lifer. Like they are not just like all of a sudden turned away um, because I know they need it. But you also have to remember like this is your promise to them because Brittany told me this is your job as a coach starts as soon as someone buys something from you. And it's so true. Most businesses, as soon as someone buys something from you, your job is done, but not with coaching. It's opposite. Um, so that's huge. That was powerful. Brittany, we love you and adore you. Thank you for Yay! speaking on our team call. Like one thing I know that we all need help with our challenge groups and they're the golden like nugget. They're the secret sauce. They are not even think about what we do, right? I think of our team pages as a challenge group, an ongoing challenge group, but this is like the, the gateway to help people transform their lives. And if we're not pouring everything into who we are to make them amazing, to get people confidence and, and to get results, it's huge. A big takeaway that I had is those five days, you guys make it towards your avatar. I was thinking of don't hit the snooze five day challenge. Um, you know, cause I, my, my avatar struggles with hitting the snooze. Um, date your spouse five day, uh, pay off your debt five day, right? I wrote down a water challenge, not getting enough water in. Bethany, dear, always texts me, did you get your water in? Because she knows that I don't. Your morning prayer and devotion. How many of you get so busy, right? And you forget to do that. Um, but creating a challenge group that or five day. Um, and then not checking your notifications as soon as you get up. And when you go to bed at night, five day challenge. Like think outside the box. This is your business. You create the rules. So if you're like, oh, like, can I do this? Yeah, you can. <laughs> There's no mold to follow. Uh, so if you have an idea, go with it and, and take and choose. I, I work well with ideas, um, but don't think you can't do something just because no one else is doing it. In fact, do it if no one else is doing it. I'm going to stop recording. Brittany, rock thing.